Hi everyone, so I'm super excited to be sitting here with Ricky BB. Hi Ricky. Hi, how are you? I'm well, me. thank you. <laughs> Ricky is the Music and Arts Director at Agape and she's also the Director of many other creative festivals which we're going to talk about. I'm going to be talking to her about vibration, life, passion and her role in what she does and what fuels her. So. I'm really excited about this, so if I'm a little <laughs> little blushed, excuse me. But um, listen, I'm so glad that you're here with us today. No, thank you, it's a pleasure. Mm. There's a few things I'm really curious about. Um, in your experience, what is passion? <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's don't dilly dally around the bush here. Let's we, just talk about it. That's it. We, we don't like to wait. The pedal time. hits the metal. <laughs> I mean, the metal hits the road. <laughs> oh, I believe that passion is energy. And passion is uh, energy and breath on point. It's like, this is what I love to do. This is what I live to do. This is what I live to love to do. So the passion is, it's this, um, it's, a, it's this intangible desire to express. Mm-hmm. So it's like when I wrote my first song, like I always loved music. I always loved, I mean, even when I was a little girl, straight up, I have just magical stories of, uh, of a musician's journey or uh, this musical being's journey. And uh, when I was in college, there was a songwriter that was getting all this attention. I don't think it was the attention I wanted, but he was writing songs all the time. And it was always, he'd play songs and everybody would go, like, oh. They were so blah blah, and I had a real crush on this person. And I, you know, we had our little run thing, and then, and then, you know, and then it was over. The summer love was over, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was fall, and we're back in school. And he's all these women around that, everybody, students, and they just loved his song. And I'm just listening to this guy, and I'm thinking, like, he doesn't love music more than I do. Like, nobody loves music more than I do. And I'm gonna write a song tonight. I'm gonna write a song tonight. And it was just this, I don't know, this thing came out of me that, that was just like a, I, I wouldn't call it a monster, but there was this, there was this desire to manifest this song, to, to, to just to create. And I ran out of the, the dorm to the rehearsal hall. I was, at, I was in college and I ran to the rehearsal hall and, and the security guard was there and he says, well, you know, you know, we shut down at blah, blah, blah. What time, you know, the, the, the rehearsal hall. And I gave him three dollars. I knew he would let me in. And I gave him my three dollars and I went and found a rehearsal piano. And I just started pounding the piano. And, I, and I'm not leaving here until I write this song. <laughs> and I wrote a great song. I mean, it was just such a great first song. Wow. You know, and it was like it was a song about him. Mm -hmm. But it was coming from my heart, mm. you know, because this person just was just breaks your heart. This mm. was that kind of person. Mm -hmm. And this song is, I'm saying goodbye, I'm saying goodbye to a broken heart. I'm just playing this song and I'm just singing this thing poured out. And after that, I mean, I never wrote any other songs like that. Mm. After that, the songs were, all, were more about the world mm -hmm. and how I felt about the world and what was happening and what it means to be the world and to, to, to be in it. But that, what wrote that song was my passion. It's a force, isn't it? It is a force, And yes. it's the emotion that's moving through your body. Yes. And whether it was the opposite of, you know, it could be fear and love yeah. and all of those yeah. things. It's yeah. moving through you and you use your talents, your gifts, your, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and just put it out there. Yeah, I've done, I've, you know, that kind of passion is the same kind of passion that, um, that led me to um, open the school. And it started out as a Saturday school. It's called the Koumba School. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to have a place for children who didn't have a place to go, to go. And I saw other people start things, but I wanted to start it. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, this is my, this is something that I need to do. And I was doing it um, really for people on Skid Row, mm -hmm. but I never really attracted too many people from Skid Row. Skid Row is an area downtown L.A. Mm -hmm. where a lot of... Um, homeless people are, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and people who are getting their lives together yeah, and in recovery. Yeah. Actually, I've met a couple of caseworkers from that area, so yeah, yeah. working with the people, so it's actually, they do amazing work. Amazing work, and I was really wanting to recruit children from downtown LA, but 
I did get one family, and then I got other workers that were working down there. So we built something really great. But my point is, when it came close to the first day of our opening of our Saturday school, this is almost six years ago, the place we were going to do it, do it, have the first gathering shut down, and there was like no place. I was like, we're going to open this school. This school opens <laughs> this Saturday if it has to be in my backyard. And that's exactly mm -hmm. where it was. It was in my backyard. You know. Yeah, it's interesting. I've noticed the energy when you talk about when you just made a decision. You know, mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. you make a decision to do yes. something, and yeah. it's not from here. It's no. something that fuels Some... you through that moves through your body. Yeah. It just like when you were heartbroken. You're yeah. just like, I'm going to pay my three dollars. I'm going to get into that studio, yeah. <laughs> and you're but yeah, I'm going to do this, and yeah. nothing is stopping me, and I'm going to do it. And yeah. you just become present in your body. You become present. Mm -hmm. to the gifts that you have moving through you, the yes. message that you want to share, and you yes. created something right. that you'll never forget, right? That's right. With this school, with Kaumba? Kaumba is like that. The Rhythm and Joy mm -hmm. Festival was like that. Mm -hmm. Everybody it's was like, saying, like, don't do it. It's like, you should do one day. I was like, no, I got the vision. It's three days. It's a three-day festival. And, I, you know, I lost my shirt on it and my shoes because <laughs> it was like I went big. <laughs> You had bigger, big vision, yeah. I, I mean, but it was amazing. Mm -hmm. I had 80 artists. Wow. You know, I had no sponsors. Wow. You know, I, you know, I didn't know how to do it, that part of it, but I know the art part of it, you know. Yeah. And it was just extraordinary. Mm -hmm. But I had to do it, and my husband was looking at me like, It's just going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna happen. Well, you know what? It's like you were building the plane while it was already flying, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And the, already, yeah. Well, the next year I did one day. Yes. Because, you know, that's what I could afford to do. Yes. <laughs> next year I was doing one day. And this, I'm going to do a one-day festival again this year. But I started right there. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to get back to where we started and, well, to, you know, go well, further. I don't know who said it. I don't know where this quote comes from, but I remember reading it's just like the vision and the dreams that you have must be bigger than what you think is yeah, possible. Yeah, yeah. You know, it must feel impossible yeah, yeah. because then you will achieve yeah. more than the yeah. average human being. And you're going to fail. Well, not fail, but you're going to have to learn the hard way sometimes. It's like I, I saw this quote that said, it said, experience is, 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 is knowing how to make wise decisions, mm -hmm. good decisions. Mm. But the way to get experience is by making bad decisions. <laughs> you yeah. know, you gotta yeah. make, you you gotta gotta, make some, yeah. some bad you decisions, look, yeah. you're gonna learn. Yeah, absolutely, you gotta yeah. be able to reassess yeah. and have a look and evaluate. Yeah. And yeah. Say, well, what works for me, what works for the people around me, right. and how can right. I move forward? Yeah, and that's what, that's what the, the Rhythm and Joy Festival 2013 did. It was really great. We doubled our numbers the next year, yes. and this coming year we, we're going we're gonna to we're double gonna tri that. triple yeah. them, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's August the 29th. 29th. Yeah, yeah, August the 29th. Yeah. That's amazing. So if you were to share a message with our viewers out there today and people who are tuning into this right now, for those who would be tuning into what is my passion or I don't know how to find it or I'm so far gone from it because they've mm. gotten into a rhythm of just, you know, mm -hmm. dumb down living. Dumb, dumb down <laughs> living and mm -hmm. They only dream about doing things that you've done with your life. Mm -hmm. What message would you like to share with them about passion? Well, I think the way to find, at least for me, what 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 guides me and what 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 guides anyone eventually is what is it that I love to do? Because sometimes the question comes in, what's missing? Mm -hmm. What's missing in my life? Why do why does my life feel so empty? What what is it that I, I don't feel fulfilled? And it's usually because you're because we're not giving, we're not sharing our gifts. And we came with these gifts, and these gifts are not just to make us famous. It, you know, they're to serve, they're to, to make the world better. So, so the question that I do, even with children, is like, and students at high schools, because mm -hmm. we went into high school, I did program in high school. So like the, the question is, what is it that you love to do that could bring good to the village? What is it that you love to do that could bring good to them? You know, and, and they were so shut down at first. It was like, well, you know, I like to smoke weed. I mean, it was mm -hmm. a party, a smoke mm -hmm. weed and party. I'm thinking like, mm -mm. and and but we got in. Yeah, because you know? <laughs> initially you would think like, well, I don't even, I, I've never afforded to ask myself what yeah. do I love to do. I mean, I'm just living, suppressing things and making it by and knowing that if I drink or if yeah. I smoke, then it, it's going to shut down my pain and I'm not going to feel the pain or I'm bored. So, yes. you know, it's actually I, really... It, it's, it was an honest answer. Yeah. It was, it was not the answer I wanted to hear. But one thing about it is that if nobody's asking you what you love to do, if they're just shoving information 
down your throat year after year, giving you tests to pass. You know, and if you pass this test, then you get to go. If you don't pass the test, then you go to prison or you go to the military. You know, it's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, society. Well, it doesn't really provide for much choice. And you, when yeah. you're feeling like you don't have choice, you don't mm -hmm. actually get to express, right? Right. The wholeness of who you are. Right, right. Yeah. What they did in, in our well, empowerment yeah. series, it was really great. And we got to, they got to open up and, oh my, they were so wow. beautiful inside. You know, they were so beautiful inside. And, and my passion is to see that beauty in anybody emerge. You know, just to see it unfold and reveal itself because that is, that is, I feel like that's why we came, is to reveal that divine self. That's beautiful. And I can definitely vouch for that on every level. I've already experienced seeing you support other artists, you know, in the audition just earlier today. <laughs> she wrote! Oh, no. It's an amazing experience. And you really bring out the best, even when somebody might not have the tools that they need there. Like, you just get in there and you, you mm -hmm. give them so they, they can shine. I've seen you do it. Mm -hmm. The few times I've already met you, it's just incredible. And you have those gifts to share. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. Let me ask you about how you feel... I guess, where does, well, we've talked a, a fair bit about music, and that's a real mm -hmm. big rhythm of everything. But if we could just talk about, for one moment, breath. Mm -hmm. What do you feel, or where does, I know we do it all the time, we, without the breath we wouldn't be living in a life. Mm -hmm. Where do you feel like this, this thing, this air breathing through our body, what, what is that about? What is that? <laughs> it's so magical. You know, it's like, um, breath is like, um, it's almost like, I have a song that says, I have quite a few songs that talk about the breath, but one of my favorite and one that is a favorite of many people is, is the breath of God. It says, the breath of God is breathing me and resting in the breath of God. I know that all is well. And you know, the joy of God is breathing me. And the joy of God is joy in me. But breath, I mean, because breath has been a hard thing for me. It's funny that you would ask me about breath because most of the time I don't feel like I have enough. Mm -hmm. Even though people consider my breath, my, my voice to be this amazing thing, they tell me that it is. <laughs> I hope it is. Well, but, it, it is, it is, it is. <laughs> but when, you know, when I was born, um, I was uh, 10 pounds uh, and uh, 10 pounds born 10, 10. I was born on the 10th day of the 10th month and I weighed 10 pounds wow. and uh, they thought I was going to be twins when I was just one baby and uh, by the time I was 40 I was nine months I was 45 pounds and asthmatic and so I had this breath challenge as a, as a, as a child as a young baby wow. and then somebody did some kind of a voodoo or something mm -hmm. and 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 they took a lock of my hair and put it in a tree and they says when she goes past this she grows past this she won't have that issue anymore and I never had asthma anymore, but I'm not the singer that can hold notes for a long mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the gift of that is that I am not a singer that does that, that I have to work with what I have. Mm -hmm. And what I have is its own unique expression. And so as the question of breath and what is it and, you know, I, it just feels like breath is a limited capacity for me. It's not. It doesn't feel like it's like eternal. It's infinite. It's like, like some of those singers yeah, that yeah, just yeah. can go they on can and hold on. It forever. Like, yeah. But it's for me. Breath is limited. You know. It's it, there. There's a just amount, a certain amount that we get as that's defined in a human life, and then one day it expires. It's not there anymore. So for me, what it is, it's a vehicle to express my heart and to express my truth. And that is what I, I think the highest use of a breath is, is that we express what is real and what we know to be true. And so many times we waste our breath on BS, belief systems that are not true. I got that from my husband, Michael Beckwith. I want to give you credit, baby. Because <laughs> people quote him all the time, but they don't give him no credit. <laughs> He made up this word called pisosity. What, what is that? Pisosity. Yeah, okay. And so when Iyama Van Zandt used it, and she said pisosity, he just, he, she didn't give me credit. I said, do you really want credit for pisosity? <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> well, what do you really want to be known for? 
<laughs> but the breath is that. You know, it is, it's the rhythm of life. It's the rhythm of our life. It's our signature. It is our pattern. It's our, you know, it's our divine complaint. <laughs> it, you know, it's the thing that, that moves us and it's ours. And it's, it's the universe. It's, it feels like it's ours, but it's, it's ours on loan. Mm -hmm. You know, so I just want to have a good run. Yeah, well, you know, I love everything you said about that, and it's just so beautiful that how how you know you were born with something that really challenged you, yeah. and yet you are on the stage. And you know what? I really believe everyone has a right and has that potential to mm -hmm. do with the voice that they have. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's what you do. I love watching, hearing you sing today. Mm -hmm. You had such presence. I don't know if they know you sing. Well, some some of them do. Yeah, she she sang today. But you did it your way, you know, you weren't doing anybody but you, you were doing mm -hmm. you. And I feel like when I'm doing me, mm -hmm. then the breath is not an issue. It's mm -hmm. totally carrying me, mm -hmm. you know. It was only constricted when I was trying to do some other form of singing that somebody was trying to tell me, this is what makes you a good singer to be able to do this. And it wasn't, and, and I couldn't do that. It's like, well, why do we all need to be Barbara Streisand? You know, it's true. What about John Lee Hooker? <laughs> you know, him? you know, what about me? What about me just being me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's just when you can just accept the thing that you've been given or that yeah. you're born with and develop it. And develop best. that. Develop that, exactly. Yeah. And find your expression because there's no way anyone else can sing it other than you. We talked about breath and we talked mm -hmm. about you know, passion and your music is so tied to your passion. Mm -hmm. Where does. Where do you feel that music actually plays, you know, a role in how much change we can create? It's the catalyst. It is. You know, music is, music is the catalyst for, uh, that's what the Rhythm and Joy Festival is about. We celebrate the power of music to change people's lives because music does. And even when we're not aware, it's doing that. It's doing that. It's really shaping a lot in America right now and you can hear the music and the state of music and on the radio and it's just so sad you know there's so much that is just it's just like out of out of balance but I feel like it will find it will it, it, it'll find it you know I feel like it's going to tip but my place in it is to is to keep doing what I do um somebody told me years ago well, when I was in my 20s I was there was so much, I was so disappointed because there was so much discrimination in America mm -hmm. and in the record industry and you had to do what they wanted you to do. It was corporatized. It still is, mm -hmm. you know, where a few black people get to go <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and you, will, you won't be singing about how people are treated at the clinic. <laughs> You're going to be singing about, especially in the are. 70s, it was love to love your baby, mm -hmm. you know. They wanted to hear songs about love and sex, mm. music, love, sex, mm. music. You know, so what I found is, is that I was disappointed all the time because it didn't feel like there was a place for my music. And mm. and, and, and a musician friend of mine at the time, he said, you, and Don Schaefer, Paul Schaefer told me this. Mm. Paul Schaefer was the music director for David Letterman for many years. And this other friend of mine uh, uh, at the time, his name was Edwin Birdsall. They both said the same thing. They said, with a talent like yours, it's not going to happen right away. Mm. you got to love what you're doing so much that you're willing to sacrifice all those things that you think you want right now to hone and just work on, to hone that talent and just to, just to let your voice emerge. But what it is you came to do, if you just keep doing it, you, you, you're going you're gonna to hit it. Mm. But you got to keep going. You can't. You know, it doesn't. It's not going to happen fast for you. I think you had that message for me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I'm just, oh. You know. Yeah, that's a very. And I was message, like 28, yeah. and I was 28 years mm -hmm. old, and so many people were coming out of the woodworks. You're going to go to the West because I was living in New York at the time, and they were like, "You're going to." I mean, psychics, people that I didn't even know, they were like, "You're going to go to New York to 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 L.A. You're going to meet a man with a beard. You're going to write beautiful music that changes the heart of people." And blah, blah, blah. And I married the first man with a beard that came to New York that was from L.A. <laughs> Wrong man. <laughs> but he was a great dad for my kids. <laughs> he was a great musician, too. He showed me how to groove. 
<laughs> but um, uh, but when I found my spiritual community, which is Agape, the Agape yeah. International Spiritual mm -hmm. Center, when I found Agape, I was that person. I was like Michael was, the, was this great minister. The church was open for a year. I show up, and it's like it was like this. It was this fit, this this fit, mm -hmm. this compliment of this message with this music. Wow. And it was like, that's why I have this gift. Wow. It was like, oh my God, this is, and I started to write and then I got inspired. Then then it was all these songs of, of inspiring songs and people do this music all over the world. What a gift. And it's as if everything up until that point led you to yeah. that moment. Yeah. And this is home. This yeah. is where you found home for every part of your expression. Yeah, it was And you're guiding amazing. so many other people with the as well with the Joy Festival, the mm -hmm. what was the other one? The, uh, the Koomba School. The Koomba School. What does Koomba mean, Craig? It means creativity. I yeah. love that. Koomba emotion. And then and then there's the Agape Choir, you mm -hmm. know. We have over two hundred members in our choir. And they sing these songs and I write. They are my instrument. Mm -hmm. The Agape Choir is my instrument. For the last twenty six years they've been there. Look, I don't know Isn't that about, funny? Uh, that's incredible. <laughs> that's incredible. It's incredible. I mean, I was getting goosebumps just as you were sharing that mm. story with me. And a lot of the messages, um, as, a, as an artist myself, I feel, oh, where is, where is this song going to fit? And it doesn't fit into this genre or mm -hmm. it doesn't fit into that. Or, mm -hmm. oh, it's not the same as this and that. And that. consistently, just keep going, just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it finds home in a place. Yeah. yeah. Mm. See, our, our examples are, are so limited of how music goes into the world. And my programming was record company, record mm -hmm. deal, fame, lots of money, record deal, <laughs> kind of circle around those three. So I wanted to be rich, I wanted to be famous, and I wanted to have a record deal that was extraordinary, that you know took me all over the world and have my songs sung, blah, blah. I had so much desire for such a shallow uh, place, you know. And in my heart now, I just want to sing what's pure from my heart. I want to be able to just to stand in that. Because if it moves me, it's going to move somebody else. <laughs> true to that. Absolutely true to that. It's been so amazing to have this time with you and just have this intimate conversation. Mm -hmm. It's been so vulnerable. It's been so revealing and just sharing of where you've come from and what you've contributed and what what's happened as a result of, you know, mm. you here and just thank you. Well, mm. you're welcome. You, you ask the best questions. Well, we just dive right in. We don't like to waste any time. So, boom. <laughs> what is passion? Oh! <laughs> thank well, you. You, you, you. You are a joy and it's been so wonderful to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. So I look forward to connecting with you again, and we're definitely going to be uh, celebrating the Joy Festival, Agape. Oh, the Rhythm and, and Joy Festival. Oh, hold on, yeah. hold on, oh, hold on. Let's, I got to show you got, something. Yeah, yeah, we've got something this here. This is so fun. Totally crazy here doing this in the middle of this interview. Oh. Hold on. Oh, here Let's we go. See. This is our Rhythm Magazine from last year. Oh, so beautiful. See, Free Your Rhythm and Your Joy will follow. Oh. <laughs> It's beautiful. And this is all the different artists that came, and Aww. Eric Benet. And, and what, this is the rhythm, well. This was our little magazine. Oh, beautiful. So, okay. Yes, and it's on, it's on um, uh, um, wheat straw paper with soy ink. So, oh, you wow. Know. <laughs> so advanced. Amazing. Oh, yeah, it was great. It wow. was a, I wanted a real newspaper, but I said, like, this isn't bad. You know, we had some really great gorgeous artists. Yeah, and wow. we had some sponsors this year, which we didn't have last year. Oh wow! <laughs> Look, yeah. definitely, and it's the same sort of time every year. Yeah. August, end of August. Well, right now, I really want to go to the end of September, but right mm -hmm. now it's the end of August. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Ricky. You're welcome. It's been so. Mm, you're so wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, thank you. you're welcome. Okay, well, over and out, guys. It's all about raising vibration and just living consciously and expanding your consciousness That's and right. sharing your real spirit, your true voice with the world and not allowing anyone or anything to suppress that to tell you who you are. So, thank you and over and out.